Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community. My name is John, and for this video, we are going to take a look at the rising prices of AV processors and AV receivers, and they are going up uh, in many cases, but not all. And uh, we'll take a look at which brands are raising prices and how much they're raising prices. So why is this happening in the first place? Well, obviously there are going to be occasional price increases under norm normal circumstances to keep up with inflation and to keep profits moving along for these companies. But they have an excuse right now because of supply problems. Um, shortages in chip technology, particularly with the DACs, the digital audio converters, uh, chips, uh, after the fact that uh, AKM had a fire about this time last year, uh, made those AKM chips in short supply. Well, you might say, yeah, but not all the models use AKM. That's true. But it's putting a burden now some manufacturers are actually switching over to ESS and TI chips uh, to make up for the shortages in the AKM. So then that puts those in demand as well. And then all the shipping problems that were, are in the world. So yes, there are some excuses for uh, raising prices. Um, but in some cases, we wonder, do they really have to raise them as much as they have? Let's take a look into this. Now, the first clue that we got uh, around these prices going, we could estimate with the with the fire that this could be happening. But we did, through the forums, notice that Sound United uh, put out a message to their distribution channel. And, you know, they're saying because of COVID and all the uh, issues with the, the, sh the container ships being parked offshore, et cetera. This is forcing them to raise prices on February 1st of 2021 for both the, uh, the, the retail and cost pricing on Denon and Marantz AV receivers as pr processors as well. Now, here is the key line. They say, most models will receive a modest increase of $50 to $100 at MSRP. Now, Den and Marantz published this MSRP on their website, so it's not hard to find. And we have a record of what the MSRP was prior to all this happening last year because we went through um, a whole series about this time last year and updated our RipeWave audio database. And again this year, but we put a new column in for the 2021 prices. Let's see how much they really did uh, raise the prices of their MSRP. And we'll might as well start with Denon and Marantz. Here are the Denon models that um, were active in the last two years. And taking a look at this, and we go all the way over to the right column uh, to see the end result here, we're seeing, yeah, a model that's gone up $50, one model that's gone up $70, but all the others have gone up a lot more than $100. And in some cases, as much as $800, $500, $800. And um, now, they don't always have the same model number, so it makes a little um, challenging there, but th there's some obvious ones. So the AVR X8500H, which was available in 2020 at $3,999. Uh, but I think you can still buy that today, but its replacement really is the HA. Um, and this is where they put the HDMI, uh, new, new HDMI 2.1 board in there. And they're selling that for $500 more. Uh, now, at some point, they'll discontinue the H only. So, in effect, on some of these, where we anticipate discontinuation soon and its replacement model, there's a $500 differential. Um, take another example, and, and this one's a little more clear cut because uh, 
the the prior model isn't available. So you have the AVR X sixty five hundred H in twenty twenty was selling for twenty one ninety nine. Now now that is the sixty seven hundred H that sells for twenty four ninety nine in twenty twenty. So that went up already a few hundred dollars when they introduced the new model, but in twenty twenty one they raised that up to $2,999. So effectively, if you were going to be a X6500H customer, you're going to pay $800 more today to get the 6700H. That's a 36.4% increase. Now, if you just take the 6700 alone that was introduced last year at $2,499, that's still a $500 increase, a 20% increase. And we can see this all the way through their range. Um, in some cases, it's, the, it's even amplified more where they've had a, a model replacing. So where they had the X500H series, so 6500, 4500, 3600, well, not always 500, but 3600, 2600, 1600. They've all become um, the the 700, so that will be the 67H, the 4700H, the 3700H, the 2700H, all getting you know being the replacement for those, and you're seeing considerable increases in pricing uh, with this. It's not just 50, the modest 50 to 100, and it's that's not the majority. The majority is well over 100 in this range. Now when you get into lower cost units, um, they, they, didn't, they didn't hit you as hard, but we, we feel that in every case Denon has raised prices and raised prices considerably. Now let's take a look at Marantz. Similar story. You know, they had the 2020 uh, models that were getting phased out, like the um, 8805, which became the 88. 05A, so this is similar to what happened with the X8500 uh, with Denon, but this is a processor only, not a receiver. And, uh, you know, th th that one, you know, it's gone up $500. If you, if you were going to be at 8805, now it's 8805A, that's $500 more. You're going to be paying just shy of $5,000 for that. That's an eleven percent increase. The seventy-seven oh five became the seventy-seven oh six, and that's going to, you know, be again an increase there for you. Uh, and at thirty-six percent, twenty percent, depending on last year's model or this year's model, but they both went up, and we can see this right down the line there. And so, you know, anywhere between. The 11% gain to as high as looks like 36% that you had with the with the uh, 30, 7705. Uh, yeah, it's and, and, and there's a one new model that doesn't really have an equivalent, which is the NR1200. So there's nothing to compare it against, but considerable price increases, well above $100 in most cases. In fact. The NR1510 is the only one that lives true to that claim that they were going to raise it up 100. Now, I don't know if they made two jumps. They made one jump in February and they made another jump. It might have been the case. Uh, I'm sure some of you will write in and tell me. Let's look at Macintosh. Now, Macintosh has the MX123 model that's based off of Marantz. And so here it's not surprised to see that move up from $8,000 to the new variant of that is the MX123 for 8K, and we'll do a video on that, but that's $500 more. So you get an 8.6% increase, but otherwise they're keeping the prices the same. So they're probably carrying forward the price increase they're getting from Marantz as their supplier. Lingdorf is the other supplier of Marantz, uh, at least uh, for the MX170. And they have their the MP series, and uh, the MP60, their flagship, has gone up $500. But at $12,999, that's only 4% uh, 
increase it, 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 it once you cross the ten thousand dollar fresh threshold of uh, five hundred dollars doesn't seem as big of a hit uh, but uh, and the and the same thing with the mp40 which has gone up five hundred dollars as as well now it's interesting note they had something called the mp50 which they discontinued sometime last year and that was nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars so Essentially, they moved the MP40 up to what the MP50 used to sell at. So uh, that one really is an effect of zero change if you were originally looking at the MP50. Let's take a look at Anthem. Now, Anthem's an interesting story because they announced the, M the AVM90 this time last year. We didn't see it when they said it was. They're now saying it's going to come out later this fall, maybe later this month. Uh, hopefully, we'll see that... They haven't changed the MSRP on that, so it's still $6,999, but it hasn't hit the street yet. So we'll see what happens when it actually does. The AVM70, which was introduced earlier this year at $3,499, uh, is now $300 more, so an 8.6% increase there. And we see, uh, you know, if you look at the counterparts, the, the 20s series, so you had the, MX, the MRX 1120, 720, and 520 being the prior generation, being replaced by the MRX 1140, uh, 740, and 540 respectively. And we are seeing uh, you know, a jump up from the old to the new, which you would have seen anyways. Uh, so there's, there's a cost difference there, but they even raised the price of what those other the new products were introduced at, so we see anywhere between one and three hundred dollar price increase on those receiver models that Anthem has. So they're doing it too, uh, not as much of a percent increase as Marantz and Denon are doing, but we're seeing it there. So it'll be interesting to see if they'll still deliver the M AVM ninety at the seven thousand um, dollar announced price. Arcam has increased their prices so uh, as much as $600 per unit. So across the board it looks like they just applied a 10% increase there. To, uh, it's relative to the, 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 the original MSRP. So anywhere between $250 and $600 um, increase there. They did dis discontinue one model with, with no um, clear replacement for it. And uh, the AV40, though, is the exception where there's no change in the price that we can tell. Onkyo. Now, Onkyo is um, interesting. Uh, both them and Pioneer have changed some of their model numbers of it, so it takes a little bit to sort out what's really going on there. But we see generally uh, increases as well, uh, ranging from as little as $50 up to $420. Uh, so the most severe case is those who were originally looking at the NR797, which is effectively replaced by the NR7100. Uh, that's like a 62% increase, going from $679 of the 797 to $1,099 of the 7100. Now they've done some things like put Dirac in, in, in some of these units, Although I'm not sure they're bringing it, I can't recall if they're bringing it down that low. I know they they brought it into uh, the the RZ ser series uh, definitely has. I think the 7100 has it as well. So you are getting Dirac with that, and there might be other re reasons for increases and in, as we do this. But I'm just looking at the pure increase, whatever that reason for them increasing, whether it's shipping, chip supply, or actually feature additions. Uh, I'm not looking at that detail right now. Just the fact it's going to cost you more for a receiver or a processor, processor this year than it did this time last year. So, uh, yep, uh, continue to see. So the one exception is the TXSR393, which appears to be like a $20 savings. Not much, but uh, they did shave something off that from as far as our records can tell. Uh, the PR... RZ5100, which was their processor model, it doesn't appear to be on their website now. So we're wondering if that's truly discontinued and what might replace it and what will they be um, 
launching at, at what price range. So that, that will be interesting. They have in, uh, discontinued a couple of models. Looking at Pioneer, a, a similar story. Uh, they've changed some of their model number conventions. So you have to think hard about what are the equivalent. Now, we generally try to la line up the number of channels and the output on the amplifiers to say, OK, the 504 uh, has five, the 505 as its replacement because they have the same number of channels, similar amplification on those, and, and write down the, the line there. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, the 704, which it doesn't have a replacement for, uh, they didn't really do their flagships with new models yet, but that's gone up $100. You know, the weird exception is the 904, their flagship, real, the high-end flagship, is uh, dropped $1,000. So it's like on sale now. So uh, there's a 25% uh, savings. And I think this is the biggest price drop we've seen. But because this is a 4K unit, maybe they're just trying to get their inventory out the door. So um, that, was, that was an interesting observation. But we are seeing somewhere between $50 and $500 uh, increases here. Um, but you know, for the more expensive models, have the bigger increases in this case. Uh, the most severe one is the LX104. What that used to cost you $449 to if you have to buy a LX105 as its equivalent today, that's $999 or a 122% increase in price on that. Sony models all have gone up, uh, although these are more close to um, Sony United's original claim of between $50 and $100, except only one model is $150 more. So uh, you would almost think that Sony made that statement back in February. But nevertheless, uh, there has been increases. I think these are fair increases that we see with Sony of $50 to $150. That can be expected with the, 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 the uh, market conditions today. Uh, Yamaha, you know, um, like some of the others we've seen, we don't see a, uh, a new version of their processor only. The CXA5200 hasn't been updated for a bit. They haven't changed the price on that uh, as a result. Uh, but the new RX A8, um, A6, and A4, and A2 are all new products. You can line these up. They seem to have a few more models in their lineup before that kind of fit into two things. So the A8A is kind of its own class. I don't think any of the pre-existing models were equivalent to that. So uh, there's nothing to compare but its, its current price with. The A3080 and 2080 have its closest match being the A6A, and that's somewhere between two and $600 increase. So you can get up, yeah, it's, um, it's really an impact. And similarly, the A1080 and A880 closest match the A4A. So that's either a $200 or $400 increase in price. And the 4A and the 2A don't really have uh, a comparable in the, in the prior models. So th this was considerable that uh, what, what Yamaha has done with its price increases. Um, Rotel is increased uh, uh, yeah, just between 6 and 10%, so not terrible here, two to $500 off the, um, uh, but these prices were higher than some of the, of the, the other companies that we looked at. So, uh, you know, $500 is not as big of, of, of an item. Now, these came largely um, to, when you look at the prior model, which didn't have the room correction in it, the Mark II added room correction. So you were getting hit $500 there, but then now we're getting hit another um, $500 for the um, market conditions uh, adjustment. So effectively, $1,000 um, for that RAP 1580 to the 1580 Mark II if bought today. And then with the RSP 1576, um, going to the Mark II, uh, you did have that increase last year um, that was considerable. 
and now you add in another a couple of hundred dollars increase there. So uh, yeah, it, it, it is uh, increasing uh, for Rotel as well. Now, looking at other brands uh, that were part of our analysis for this video, Integra, they changed their whole model lineup. We couldn't you know, equate the, the prior models, which are now discontinued, to the new introductions in a clear way yet. So uh, it's, we don't really know what they've added in here, factored in for their new models as a price increase. Uh, we'll have to do a deeper study there, but maybe they haven't at all. Uh, Emotiva has not raised prices. In fact, in a recent uh, podcast that they did, um, they say they're going to hold tight and not raise prices. So glad to hear that. And um, yeah, that's, that's good that they're taking that position. Monoprice has not raised their price on the HTP1, still $4,000. Lexicon, still all their models are the same price. Now, it's interesting, the other Harman brand did increase, but not Lexicon. And neither did Audio Control. So those two Harman brands staying the course with their um, MSRP uh, pricing, as far as we can tell. Uh, NAD, no, no real change there. I mean, they did introduce the uh, V3 uh, re to V3i, uh, which was an increase in itself, but uh, that was uh, not even last year. So I'm not going to count that as really a price increase uh, that's going to impact here. So NAD staying um, true there. So there are some bright lights here where manufacturers have been good. They haven't uh, raised their prices, but in other cases, I'm wondering if there's some profit taking along uh, some opportunistic uh, views here along with the real market conditions that, yeah, is certainly having an impact on the cost to manufacture these products and to put out the volume in a timely fashion. And we can sympathize with that. But I'm really not sure that $500 plus dollar adder um, is fully justified in all cases. What are your thoughts? We'd like to have your comments uh, in here. Please uh, add them to this and be part of this community. And if you do like um, this video, you enjoyed it, like and subscribe to this RightWave Audio community. And be sure to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.